Kiara, welcome on. All right, and bonjour. Welcome to the selection table with the esteemed panel that we always present to you every week. I'm Pommy and Oz, as you know, because you clicked on my YouTube channel. So if you didn't know, that'd be a, a quiet a balls up on your part. But as always, I am joined by an established, degree-laden panel, whether it be football degrees, whether it be real degrees, or whether it be Leg Dog, who definitely has a degree in art. Leg Dog, how is you, my friend? Mate, got a degree in uh, sports media, top of my class, just quietly. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Um, <laughs> valedictorian, Dean's Award winner for that year, highest education award winner at the Thai Institute, but that's all right. Uh, I'm fantastic, mate. I'm excited to be back. I missed last week and uh, looks like I've come back for a good one. We've got plenty of changes we're forced to make. It's exciting stuff. We, we have literally waited for this show. I've got to say, th this show is better on a loss and better with injuries because it means that we can be a bit creative, so... Um, if there is a silver cloud to what is a very dreary cloud, it is we've got content. So I agree with you, Leg Dog. Um, if Leg Dog's here and it's selection table, that means we have a rotating guest because uh, Paolo is out SEN and incoming after his week off, he's by. I've got the great Ian from the Navy Blue Corner. Ian, how the bloody hell are you? Yeah, very good and very keen to jump into it all this week. I, I think some of us, including myself, we've swung the axe when we've come off some really good wins. So it feels uh, interesting now to potentially do the same after a loss and with a lot of injuries. So yeah, mate, absolutely buzzing for tonight's episode. Well, yeah, usually one of us has to bite the bullet and look like a complete idiot for making <laughs> seven changes to a win inside. But I mean, the club has helped us out and... Uh, as always, joining us from his car, hopefully not in crime lid and melton. I've got the wonderful great man himself, Mr. Bucky from My Blue Heaven. Bucky, how are you doing? Yeah, good, Pom. All right, boys. Now, Lick Dog might have a degree. I've got a master's in bullshit. So, um, <laughs> looking forward to it. I think the big question, boys, tonight will there, I mean, we know there will be some force changes and quite a few with injuries, but. Will there, in fact, be any omissions? Mm. Be interested the, if there is. I mean, spoiler. That is the big I, question, really. You'd be, given the amount of injuries we have and the amount of force changes we have to make, you're probably a little bit stiff if you do go out, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Spoiler, I sacked players. So uh, I, I, I did admit players. So. But it is going to be interesting, Bucky. Um, I did enjoy the flex. Actually, Bucky talks about um, having a degree in bullshit. Uh, when I first met my wife uh, at the golf club I was at, it used to have director of golf and then your scientific qualifications. And mine is a bachelor of science. So it did officially say BS. And uh, <laughs> my, my wife often takes go. the piss. My wife there often takes the piss that it's proof that I've got a degree in bollocks. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we are. You can get it. But we'll start this week with Mr. Lack Dog. So Lack Dog, this was the team hey. last, last week with, um, it says Frio. I didn't get around to changing that bit. So apologies, chat. <laughs> that was Adelaide. That is the team with Adelaide. So based on that team, Lack Dog, this is what you brought me. So, it is. as you can see, we've had to change the algorithm to uh, fit all the outs this week. So, thank you very much for that, Count and Football Club and the selectors. So, uh, let Dog take us through it. Tell us what you saw and uh, we'll pick apart. Yeah, I mean, I'll start with the sacking. And it's unfortunate because I really didn't want to sack Pitto because he probably... I mean, he did his job. He only played half a game. But, you know, we can't... He did his job. He hit the ball down to people. But I just want to see this team... A bit more dynamic, and it's more about what Tom DeConnig can't do when he's not in the ruck than what Pitto does in the ruck. So I've dropped him from the side. Arazzi, I dropped to sub, and that's just because I literally couldn't find another player who's fit and healthy or got a touch in the VFL. So Arazzi, I dropped to the sub, which I don't love, and I'm happy to be talked out of. Sard and McGovern come out injured. Coming into the team, promo Carroll just for a midfield rotation. Um, from the sub. But coming into the team, I've gone with Lewis Young. I've brought him in to play the full back role. And Waitering got beaten 
on the weekend pretty badly and he kind of just it almost looked like I know he cares but he was just a step behind whenever he needed to be he was a bit indecisive I think he's better and we don't get to see it too often but I think he's better when he's in that intercept role so I want to give him an opportunity to do that and we can always switch him and young if need be I also bring in to be our seventh defender because I think Boyd takes on Saad's creativity Boyd I'm comfortable with Boyd doing whatever we need him to, whether that's being an offensive weapon or a defensive player. I think he's in a, a really good vein of form. So to be that seventh defender, I've bought in Cowan, and he can play mm-hmm. or small. Juniors, he was sort of that halfback weapon with a massive leg on him, but we've sort of played him as a defensive sort of medium tall defender. So I think he can fit whatever we need as the game progresses. Uh, and then the other inclusion that I haven't touched on was Jackson Bins. I just want him as a bit of outside run. I think we move Kennedy into that uh, core midfield with Cripps and George Hewitt. We'll do what, what Walsh did last week, be that sort of outside connector player who can go in if he needs, um, and then just have Bins as a bit of rotation on the wing for me. It's, I mean, that's the team. That's the team I've come up with. In terms of guys that are unlucky, I think Pito probably doesn't deserve to be dropped and then he might not even be dropped in the real deal. But I was just really struggling to find fit and healthy players. Believe me, I tried to get Hudson O'Keefe into this team. I really did. But I just couldn't quite make it work. It's not like you, Lack. I mean, to, to spring a selection change. But I like the team, Lack. I'm going to I'm gonna pick on all of you this week with a random little thing but the theme this week is right cow and rank as the number one side in the comp for offering the easiest shots at goal that so that is a stat that is shots at goal difficulty rating cow and our bottom or number one if you go easiest how do we stop conceding such easy shots at goal because this has been a pattern from round zero i hate saying that Hmm. What what do you think in this team that you've done there to try and make them shots against a little bit harder? Because we're working hard. Every other side seems to work easy. Is it as simple as change the defensive line, how high up it plays? Or do you think there is a role that we're missing to make it a little bit harder? Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, uh, on the weekend, we gave away a lot of easy shots and then they converted more difficult ones, right? Tex Walker's kicking them from outside 50 with relative ease. Um, and I I think Weedering, I'm hoping as a looming presence, playing that McGovern role, coming off his man, I'm hoping he can almost do that Darcy Moore, Alir Alir type role where Tom Stewart, whatever it is, where he can be accountable but doesn't always have to be. Now, that relies on everyone else, uh, Lewis Young, Kemp, et cetera, et cetera, being in the right spots and allowing to do that. But I think we're a lot scarier if, kicking into a weeder who's maybe a little less accountable. GWS have a couple of weapons, but in terms of key forwards, it's it's what Jesse Hogan, who we're particularly worried about, uh, who I think Young could potentially run with. But I thought, Pom, I mean, it's been a trend all year, as you said, on the weekend, we gave up a lot of easy shots because it felt like no one in the side was really playing much defence. It was sort of everyone was a little bit a step off or the urgency wasn't quite there. Everyone had moments of defensive prowess, but for, for the for the most part, they got over the top really easy for us, which is going to create those, you know, the Joe the Ghost, Joe the Goose goals. So, Joe I, the ghost. I think it's an attitude <laughs> thing. Joe the Ghost, Joe, Joe the, the Ghost. <laughs> um, Bucky, have you got any questions for Mister Light Dog? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll continue on, I suppose with the defensive theme with the with the back six at the moment and you I like your idea of trying to free weedering up a little bit. I mean he was he was awful last week. Mm. I mean even like I that's the first game I've been able to go and watch live and geez he just looked he yeah. I know it wasn't helped by a lack of accountability through the middle of the ground, but his refusal to be, I suppose, accountable um and just how he let Tex Walker 
sort of just those easy those easy marks, uncontested marks. I've, I've never seen it quite like that with Jacob Wiedering before. So who you think you so you think Lech Dog Young will go to Hogan? You're comfortable with that? So that will leave obviously Wiedering will need to play on someone. So would that be the younger Cadman? Would that be the role for Wiedering? Is that what you'd try to get Wiedering to do? Yeah, I, I'm trying to get him off because you can always switch it back, right? But I, I've tried to Wiedering, as you said, he just didn't look willing to run with Tex. And and maybe he just maybe that was a maybe he gets yelled at at training and switches that up, but he just refused to stay on him. So I, I want him involved. Um, but it was a it was a different Jacob Wiedering on the weekend. And the other one, I suppose the other one that's caused us headaches, I reckon, for a, a period of time is Jake Riccardi. Mm. So would that be would that be Kemp's man? I thought Kemp was good last week defensively on Fogarty. I thought he beat Fogarty. He was probably our only winner, winner defensively. I know he made a few mistakes late, but I thought Fogarty was their only forward. He didn't have any impact at all, and I thought Kemp did a really good job on him. Would you be comfortable with Kemp going to uh, to the more nimble Riccardi, who is very dangerous? Yeah, look, I think so. Going into the game last week, I was worried about Fogarty in that matchup, and I, I'm with you. He basically didn't get involved until the very end of the game, and um, I think he had a goal assist or two in that last quarter. But, yeah, I thought Kemp was awesome, despite he's always going to make a couple of mistakes, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm. The old whipping the old whipping boy mistakes. But I thought yeah, exactly. there was that. I think the, the confidence booster, uh, mate, was that, spoil very early in the game where he sort of lunged and I think the area we want to see the improvement from from Kemp is that ability to defend you know with his spoils and that I think that gave him some some real confidence it was it was outstanding I've never really seen him do that before no he was really good he was really good no I like the team mate really like it Ian, have you got any, are, are we going to throw Lake Dog under the bus? <laughs> Not too much. I do quite like the team. Very similar, I would say, to mine. Probably going to keep it on the back line with just one little question around. Probably trying to replace Gov and what he brings. And I totally like the plan for intercepting, but how he kind of attempting to replace his sort of distribution and rebounding, that's probably the thing that... We love a lot about Gov and how he gets the ball going with Young and Weedering. They're not known for moving the ball mm -hmm. quickly. I know Weedering's definitely improved on that. Young, definitely really, really slow. So what's your sort of plan with replacing that side of Gov's game, moving the ball quickly for us? Yeah, look, it's not going to be easy. You're right. Weeders and Young don't dis distribute the ball very quickly. Um, so you're probably relying on quick. Well, again, they, they don't do it quickly, but it's Boyd and Kemp. Um, and Newman, Newman's role has been slightly different this year. Maybe we use him higher, push Kemp further back. I'm not sure, but that is an issue, and mm. I haven't been able to solve it, to be honest. And I don't think yeah. if Marchbank was available, I have a solve for it either. That's fair. And I just want to note, there's a few people asking about why Chin Cotter's not in the team. I just didn't want to pick a guy who I know he's not on the injury list, but got managed last week. I don't know enough about why that was, so I just I didn't, he didn't play last week, so he didn't make it into mm. my side. Would you? Would he come in? Would he come in if he was available, Lek Dog? Would you have him instead of Cohen? I no, I see. I, I maybe I'm biased. I still want to see what uh, Cohen is. It Cohen or Cowan? I got no idea, but uh, yeah. I want to see it, him in this team. I think Chicot is probably more flexible in what he can do. So he might come in instead of a, a bins or maybe even replace a Carol or a, or a Fantasia. I'm not sure, but I definitely want Cowan in this team. Mm. Mate, yeah, I agree. With I love, I love I it. I love it. And Ian, you were, you went very similar to like dog. You were yes. you, you axed Pitana as well. <laughs> I, I think everyone might have axed Pitana. I can't mm. remember, but uh, <laughs> it's not his fault. Yeah, it's not his fault. But um, talk to me about your team and uh, chat. Throw your questions in. Hmm. No, yeah, it's a Pitto's the it's a tough one because yeah, Black Dog nailed it very well. He played pretty well for what we kind of expect from him and we ended up winning the clearance battle which is an element of our game we have been trying to improve upon i called for it a few weeks ago saying i'm keen to see 
in, in a hit out what the two rucks do look like. And in hindsight, it's pretty easy now to say, I don't want to see that for a long time. And I'm happy to say that I am wrong with that as things stand. I think we just lost really just too much the other way. And particularly as soon as that injury to, to Saad happens, you just lose that extra runner that the way Adelaide played definitely went against us. And, and I think similarly with GWS in there, Orange Tsunami, the, the way they want to move the ball from D50 quickly through us. Playing the two rucks, I don't love it. And even Harry, I like him getting more involved in what we've seen earlier this season by him being able to be a bit higher up the ground. And something that at the kind of shorter Marvel ground, I didn't like being there, seeing quite a lot in the Adelaide game was just how crowded the four line was with Charlie and Harry. So many times they were in each other's way. And if we can maybe get a bit more separation by having Harry a bit higher up the ground, I think that is a good way to do it. So yeah, look, Pitto's out. I'm bringing back the run in with Carol. Pretty easy switch for me. We don't have an abundance of guys who can come in. So that's an easy one. Um, Jim Cotter, I've brought in for Saad because, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on with his fitness, but I'm going off the injury report. They say he's not on the, he's not injured, so I'm going to play him. And I think his run allows us to replace Saad as best as possible. Probably the the biggest thing I've done here is bring in Cowan over a Lewis Young, which I'm still not. 100% sold on right now. So I'm kind of keen to get everyone's thoughts and, and have this discussion point because I guess looking at the three tools and, and what I'm trying to replace at the moment, Weedering can be that lockdown on Hogan. I, w- I want our best key defender on their best key forwards because I'm not as worried about the other two. And then Kemp, I think we saw him play really well on, on Fogarty. So he's going to play on Riccardi. And then I know he's giving up a bit in height Cowan on Cadman, but Cadman's still developing, and I don't think he's going to dominate uh, sort of the, the way he would if he's a few years developed. Uh, and I like the idea of him intercepting and playing that more Gov role because I don't think Gov's really played that lockdown defensive role for a while. And I just think the way Cowan played, particularly in the VFL in the weekend, intercepting everything, trying to get the game going by foot. We haven't seen it a lot at AFL level, but he's under 18s. He loved to distribute. He's got a long, booming kick. So that's what I'm trying to replace as best as possible. But I do understand he is giving up a little bit of height. But hopefully the way we structure team defense, the intercepting will be the way we defend rather than having it to be too much one-on-one. And then last thing, just bins as the sub for some more leg speed off the bench to move things around a little bit if we need to. Well done, Pommy. I saw you working in the background there, mate. <laughs> uh, apologies. For some reason, I'm saved last time he was on the show, so I've uh, edited that there. Don't worry, chat. Um, Bucky, any questions for the great Ian? I have to actually take my glasses off because I thought I saw McGovern there at center half back. And I was just <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> um, who play- I'll ask Ian. Um, I, like, I like your reasoning, mate, around... Mm those defensive matchups. I think Cabman, I think he plays a little bit in the ruck as well. And mm. he's a developing tall second year. He's still pretty skinny. So whether whether Cohen would get that job, I'm not quite sure, but I like your reasoning. Who do you, who would you be playing on Toby Green? Yeah, I reckon I'm going to start with Newman. Probably yeah. out of those players available, he I reckon he's our best lockdown. I might have tried Saad if he was fit, but given that that's the case, I'm not sure Boyd or Williams fill me with a lot of confidence. And because they're just better distributors and we're losing that again with Gov plus Saad, I reckon it's just the safe choice. But again, kind of almost like with the tools, we can potentially rotate things around if we're finding elements aren't working. Kemp played so well on his defensive matchup last week. So if we're losing too much elsewhere, does does Weedering move off onto a Riccardi to try and help Cowan out a little bit and and Kemp go to Hogan similarly with the smalls? I think if he's absolutely burning Newman, we can change things up, but I'm going with my best small defender. I think uh, John Holden asks, uh, if, and by the way, shout out John, met the other in the preseason, asks a very mm. good question. Would you have dropped Pitto if we won? I would have, to be honest. I thought it was a strange 
thing at the time, the late change for um, Chera. I understand why they attempted to do it. In my eyes, I think it's a bit of a, okay, we're losing someone out of that sort of clearance in midfield. We don't have another midfielder to to bring in for Chera. So let's try and beat it by bringing in a better Ruckman and winning the clearance, ensuring that position up a bit more. But yeah, throughout the game, there was a lot of things I didn't like to see and the lack of run, knowing that GWS can torture you with the, the quick handballs, their big handball inside. The thought of that with a big lumbering pitto through the middle just it makes me nervous. So I think, yeah, even if we did scrape in and get the win, I'd still be dropping pitto. Uh, uh, and question to you other two, just while we're here. I haven't seen the t- your teams yet. Take that aside. Do you think Pitto will be in the side this week? Do you think the club will select him? I don't think they will. I don't, I don't think they will, but I was just sort of thinking about it. Then the fact that um, they lose, they do lose Sam Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not quite sure of his replacement. Is it? Is it? Keith usually comes in if, if Taylor doesn't play. I mean, Taylor didn't play last year when we played him in round, what was it, round 23 or 24? We played them mm. last year. And I think Taylor was injured that game. Buckley did a really good roll down back. But whether whether there's that notion that if Taylor's not there, can we stretch them? But it, there's always that. I mean, when, when does that experiment we just don't go with that experiment anymore. It hasn't stretch, yet. <laughs> stretch, stretch the opposition with TDK up forward. It's almost like we're, we're channeling most of our ball through Harry and Charlie anyway. Um, and it almost feels like it's a bit of a waste having another tool down there. So mm. I I think they won't play him. I think he'll be – I just think we look too slow. I really mm. did. I think we, we lost a fair bit defensively, particularly through the middle of the ground, playing both Ruckman. So – Given given that they mm. only go in with Briggs as the general number one ruckman, and I don't think he's a a great ruckman. He's he's nice and strong. Um, I don't think they'll play TDK. No, in fact, mm. I'm I'm pretty certain they won't. Yeah, I, I I reckon they will, but it's genuinely going off just simply gut feel rather than anything else. I hope they don't for all the reasons that Bucky just said there. And interesting, I think, like with the forward line, just to touch on it as well, because it kind of works well into explaining a bit more of my team as well while we're on it. It's I don't love like the the three smalls at the moment, but obviously we don't have a, a lot of choice. We're not spoiled for that by any means. I think if we are able to not have an extra tall down there by playing the two rucks, it can just allow the ball to come in quick and just let them feast at the ground. I think if you're having an extra tall, it's just clouding things up down there. So, yeah, I, but weirdly, I think they will because of GWS's sort of tough midfield. Yeah, if that was their solution last week, I don't know. I, I just weirdly think they will. What about you? Um, I think... They will play Pitto. <laughs> I just I don't think I would. <laughs> yeah. I think they will play Pittonet. Um that's my that's my gut feel. Sorry. I was slightly distracted. I was just looking. they GWS put up an in the mix article and Callan Ward will come in for Kenelio. Yeah. And then they've listed five or six players. The only one that's a defender is Lecalier. So they'll probably just rely on Buckley to mm. um to be to be that key defender. But yeah, anyway. What do you reckon? Um, Tom, I, do you reckon nope? Do you reckon they'll play Pitto? I don't. I, no. I, I genuinely don't. I think the 50% game time as well, it doesn't actually check out. It the, it's dramatically falls off five minutes into the third. So I think that alludes as well that he wasn't 100% right. And it gave me some VFL vibes against North Melbourne, where in the fourth quarter he disappeared. He had a great game. But he disappeared in the fourth, and I've just got a feeling that I, I think we're starting to find out what Hawks' his issue was. You can't get four quarters mm. out of him, which in the system, everyone's been versatile. I don't think we can afford to have one non-versatile player mm. unless they're Max Gorn. Like, let's say Pittenet was Max Gorn, maybe. But in my opinion, mm. Pittenet is just a run-of-the-mill real muck ruckman. Yeah. I, I think, think if there's me. no injuries, it... 
it can work because you if it's not if you find out it's not going your way you can bring on the leg speed but we saw on the weekend as soon as you get an injury that sort of throws that out of the way so yeah it's weird that he played yeah what 49 percent game time oh, it just feels yeah super odd sorry to interrupt you bucky oh no i was just saying from a i think from a positive and a depth uh point of view i think the the development and form of young Hudson O'Keefe, particularly on the weekend in the VFL, just sort of shows you, I think, what a pr promising prospect he is moving forward. I think he's a lot more mobile than, than, than Pitt Net and has got probably a few extra layers to his game as well. So I think another another year under his belt in the VFL. Um, and it's good to know that we do have a young guy coming through. I know we've signed Pitt Net to a, a four-year contract, but... Yeah, that doesn't mean a hell of a lot, mm. but yeah, we do have some we do have some options in the ruck at the moment, um, and I thought that was an outstanding game by the youngster last week against Collingwood in the VFL. I thought he was really good and showed a lot of promise. I was hoping one of you would put him in your team so I could lock him in, but I, I was too scared to do it myself. <laughs> Mate, I agree, but we got over to the man himself, Bucky. Bucky, you've. Uh... You filled out the outs and ins. Take me through it, Bucky, and uh, chat. Throw, throw in some questions as well. I think it was a pretty. I think it's the same team as what Leg Leg Dog. The only thing is, I've got Young at center back and we yeah. at full back, but that could be yeah. flipped. Um, I've actually put Orazio as sub. I think I think he's horribly out of form, um, mm. and he's probably the the least. I like Owies because he's clutch. He's a clutch player and he's a reliable goal kicker. Uh, he doesn't do a hell of a lot, a lot other than snagging a few. And I mean, he's quite good defensively, but he's he just knows how to kick goals. I think Durden. We need to put time in the Durden, um, and he needs a block of games under his belt, and hopefully it will click shortly for him. But he's quite explosive, and I feel like he's I feel like he's almost there. Um, without being there, obviously. And I think Orazio is just, he's just desperately out of touch. Um, and I know he's an experienced player and his best is really good, but just right at the moment, that, that mm -hmm. best is well behind him and we're not getting a hell of a lot out of him. Um, so given the fact that we don't have a lot of options coming through the VFL at the moment because of injuries, I think he was okay when he was a sub against, I think it was North Melbourne came on. I think... One thing we can rely on uh, older players to come on and have a bit of an impact. Um, he, can, he can roll up through the middle. So he, he goes to the sub. And I'm bringing in, I agree with Leck Dog. I, I, even if Chincotta was available, I'm going with the, the younger player. I think defensively he's really strong. And he's, he's that hybrid type defender too. I think he can play, as Ian said, he can play a little bit taller. Um, and could potentially, with Newman at times, take Toby Green which would be a great experience for him. Um, and obviously, you know, Bins just deserves an opportunity and what better what better time to get that opportunity is this week when we uh, we just need some players, we need some troops to come in and we need this kid to come in and, and make an immediate impact. So they're my changes. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just, yeah, I can't see Pitnet playing. Um, I just don't think it's working. Um, my train of thought, boys, is I don't think it will ever work. I, I just don't. I, I just yeah. don't like. I just don't like those that two ruck situation, particularly if one isn't competent forward. Um, and the other one I've got coming into the team. Help me out, here, boys. I've got uh, a little bit uh, blind down here. Uh, Carol yeah. obviously coming in yeah. from the sub position. I thought he, yeah, he was. He got plenty of great, game time last week. Um, against Adelaide when he came on, didn't have much of an impact, but it's just nothing else. I mean, I was going through the VFL report from last week. I was looking for plays and really um, you're not bringing Moyer in of a nine touch game. I mean, we mentioned last week, what does he need to, to do to get into it? You know, to get into this senior team. We're not, we're not seriously going to consider him at the moment. So I think it's time for us to see Jackson Bins play. Um, make his debut mm -hmm. against the Giants. So they're my changes. I think did you, he, you, oh, you go, Pom. You, you talked about Pitana, and I agree with you. I think if we play two mm. rooks, 
the guy's got to be in the team for another reason. And you, you mentioned Hudson, who by a mile had his best game. And he was against two Ruckman as well, who are on the list with the same type of deal that Hudson O'Keefe is, that they're trying to learn their trade at Collingwood. And I thought he looked 10 years ahead of them. He really put them to shame. What do you think, Hudson O'Keefe, if you were... If you were a coach, what would you be saying he's got to do? Because it seems Voss wants the two-rook system. What does he have to do up to the bye to seriously be considered, in your opinion, Bucky? Oh, I think I think he's I think he's got to continue what he's what he's doing. You know, obviously winning hit out is important, but mm. also clearances. I think he had a lot of clearances. I think I think the positive out of Pitnet is he's a he's a, a, a decent clearance player when the ball hits the deck, but it's his, his clearances aren't clean. Um, they're never clean. So I'd be really encouraging Hudson O'Keefe to really work on that part of his game. And, and and if possible, if possible, I'd be if he can do it, I'd be pushing some opportunities to play forward as well. Um, you know, give me a spell in the front half. Don't roll me onto the bench. Let's see if we can, you know, we can get something out of him forward and centre because mm. I feel if we can have two, if we're going to go with the two Ruckman, we need that extra layer. And and unfortunately with Pittnet, we, we, we just don't get that. We go, oh, I mean, mm. we can get it occasionally with, with TDK, um, but that's what I'd be encouraging with the, with the younger Hudson A. Keith. But I'd like to see a little bit more of him. Um, I really would to see whether he could, Sort of develop into that, into that bloke that can go forward for you know five minutes and and, and take a grab and kick a goal. I think he's got quite nice quite nice skills, Pom the kid. I think he's a reasonable kick and a and a reasonable contested mark as well, and quite mobile. And, and the thing I like about Hudson O'Keefe is he, he's a real competitor. You know, he's a he's a he's a real competitor for someone so young. Um, so it's, it's exciting and we've got some options mm. there, but whether we can play the two, that's very debatable. I want to uh, bring my hot take. I was on the Blue Abroad channel on Monday doing the Monday show. I'm bringing my hot take here. My hot take was that our, I said our premier, our next Premiership Ruckman hasn't played a game for Carlton yet. Mm. Uh, and you can take a lot of people took that as, oh, well, wait, do you, what do you think we're trading for another Ruckman or signing Sean Darcy or whatever it is? But I think, like, maybe there's a world where this, there's a hybrid Hudson O'Keefe because I, I really liked him mm. in his draft year and TDK mold because I, I think I agree with you. And it, I'm not necessarily saying he's going to be the greatest Ruckman of the world. But someone who, as you said, need, they need to be able to have a second string to their bow and impact mm. forward. I think ideally the best player to partner with TDK would be another TDK, but we don't have one of them. Um, you can't clone mm. a player. But I think that's the mould. I think we will continue, as you said, Bucky, to progress with a two-ruck, or maybe it was you, Pom, a two-ruck system. I just don't think Pito's that right second ruck. Um, I think he's mm. fantastic. I see a lot of the comments saying, can't believe we signed for four years. What a waste. I mean, if you if you believe what they say, that he was on minimum chips for four years, as that backup third mm. option ruckman who comes in when everyone else is injured, it's it, you need those guys on your list, and we haven't mm. had that for years, but he's certainly not the uh, the mm. primary one. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's, we're like, we're... Speaking on Pitto from what, what we've seen, which is 100% fair enough, I agree with everything, but there's always that positive side where he hasn't had a run at it with his body over the last couple of years, so there's still a possibility he's still quite young for a Ruckman anyway that something does happen in the next couple of years if he does get his body right where he's able to elevate other aspects of his game and become more than just a backup, um, but I do or even though I've just argued that point, conversely, I agree with Lech Dog. And it's funny you mentioned that sort of big call because I remember having like a, a hot take prediction um, at the start of the year. And mine that I threw out just thinking about the rucks at the start of the year was that by the end of the season, we'll be crying out for either Lemmy or O'Keefe to be that third tall extra ruck. So I love that someone else has also been thinking about that as well. It's good to see we're aligned. <laughs> I think, I think. I think the best thing for those two boys last year is when, when I think was Pitnet was down for a period of time and they had to shoulder the ruck to both of them. They, they went it alone for the second, I think it was mm. the second half of the season. I, that was, that was a great show of faith. And I think, 
that's certainly fast tracked. I think Lemmy's showing some some reasonable signs. Um, but I, I agree with you, like dog. I think that's a that's a great call. I love it. Mm. You know, I think there's something about Hudson O'Keefe. I love. I mean, we love competitors, and he looks like a competitor. Um, and look, let's not get too carried away because it, it, it is a fair fair chunk to go. But mm. yeah, um, yeah, I'll, he was. We picked him up as a supplemental pick, wasn't it? It wasn't in the main draft. Yeah. He sort of came through. Yeah, he was uh, yeah, he SSP, missed, yeah, 19 yeah, he years missed, old. He missed the main draft, so um, which which often happens to, to young Ruckman. Um, well, let, look, we pit hmm. it, even if he's not going to be at our football club. He, he, he'll be around in the AFL soon yeah. for a long time. <laughs> oh, he's tall. Keep... He's going to be in the AFL, yeah, forever. Yeah, the Ruckman, they just keep recycling him. They end up at another club. They just keep going around and around until about 32 years of age. So, um, yeah, we got some we got some options there at the moment, mm. but it's still a headache. It's still a headache trying to get all of them in at the one time. Everyone's going to look mighty stupid when they realise that Lek Dog was actually referring to Murkoff and not just <laughs> yeah. Do, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like everyone's assumed. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I love that. I, I love your team, Bucky. I think it's nice, mm. simple, straightforward. My one question for you, Bucky, as well, yep. just on, on, on the stoppage. Obviously, I felt when Pernet came in, that was Carlton reacting to the stoppage. That yeah. was like, they were like, right, we've lost Jera. Let's bring a, the big guy in, the big guy in. But I agree with you. I feel like a lot of his numbers are warped. Like the clearances, they're kind of scrub click clearances. They're not like the true arced clearance that you see from Gorn, who hits yeah. a forward on the run. What would you, do you think with this team, is this the time that we just give Kennedy the job? Because I feel like Kennedy at the moment is the hole filler is this the time that Carlton say, right, Kennedy, go and do it? Because I feel he's probably the cleanest of the players who has gone on the mm. ball this season. He looks like he hits a target every time. So you're saying chuck him into the middle, give him more yeah. midfield time? In the... Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think, I think, I think he's in reasonable nick at the moment. And we're probably, we probably, I think we had to play him back when, um, yeah, when mm. Saad went off. I think he went back, but. Yeah, I think I think he's he's in reasonable form at the moment. And if we remember what Michael Voss said, there was probably only room for a couple of inside midfielders, and he was one of them. Um, so I think we'll see him against his former club, spending a little bit more time in the centre of the ground on the weekend. He, he is a good clearance player, and he has that ability to get clean possession. Um, so look, I know I know we were slightly better, Tom. On the weekend with the clearances, I think we did. We win the clearances. I think we yeah, won we the, did. We, we won the. Back. I think we, we won the center clearances, but around the ground it was pretty much even. Um, whether that's got to do with TDK and Pitnet, I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure that will come back. I really do. Um, I'm sure it's just something that's probably just deserted us for a period of time, and I think that will come back. But I like. I like your, your your idea of putting Kennedy in the middle. The only my only question with that though is just the speed, particularly defensively. Um, you know, we're not the quickest team in there with Hewitt, Cripps, and Kennedy. Walsh is obviously, you know, he's got got more toe, but on the spread, you know, that that's a, a sort of pretty sort of labouring sort of midfield. But from a clearance point of view, um, it is pretty strong and clean and clean. And clean clearances as well, as as you said. We did. We, we talked about it on the live that if you watched Voss in the second half, he shelved Acres to start at halfback and put Walsh and uh, and Ollie Hollands in just outside the square in the six six six. And yeah. the centre bounce at the time was Cripps, Carroll, and uh, Hewitt, which isn't the quickest them three, but. It kind of fabricated because Walsh and Hollands straight away made the beeline for the outlet ball and Hewitt hit Walsh and Walsh took off. Do you think that's something maybe they could manufacture? Because I've been calling for play Crips, Hewitt and um, Kennedy in that centre and have them dynamic players to make the run. Because a team that did that against us last year was Geelong, who used their bigger bodies to try and stop us and then got the pace outside and manipulated the 666 rule. 
Is that something you could see maybe Carlton getting a bit creative that way? Oh, I thought I think you make an outstanding point. You know, you go really tough and strong in the middle of the ground and you get you try and engage your half back flankers a little bit more as well with your speedy Zach Williams or, or, or Jordan Boyd, that they're coming in off the square really strongly. And as you mentioned, Ollie Hollands, uh, Walsh as well. So I think it's a great point. Um, you're almost sort of, you know, using those those players as excuse me. <coughs> As extra mids coming through the way you get your outside run and speed. Yeah, so you go nice and tough and strong in the middle of the ground. Um, hopefully get the ball out of the front of the stoppage a little bit more than we have so far this year and, and, and really engage those halfback flankers as well and get them involved in the game. Because what we do know about Boyd and, and not so much Williams is, is their ball use. We want that. We, we just need the ball in the hands of Jordan Boyd a lot more than we have so far this year. He's mm. been really good, but we've got to get him involved in the game a little bit more. So is he the man we can free up, Pom? That's the question I'm going to ask. I know he's a good defensive player, but can we free him up more? Has he got has he got the natural footy now to be able to do that? We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, I, I feel if the injuries weren't there, that you would probably see... Because we've seen Boyd being used an awful lot almost as a mid in the stoppages. Yeah. I, I feel if mm. we didn't have the injuries, there might be a Zach Williams. There might be a Boyd getting a few mid minutes here. And I really do feel like you that Zach Williams may have been a midfielder had we not had the injuries. Because we saw Doc get that job. Mm. I reckon when Doc went down, mm. my first thought was if Williams gets six or seven games into him, do they then make Zach Williams become Doherty and say, you're our mid-rotation and we give Ching Cotter the halfback role with Cowan the halfback role, whoever's playing well? I, I do feel that's an option. I just think, like you say, injuries have probably killed experimentation mm. for a while. Jesus, we forget about Doc, don't we? We just forget yeah. about him. It's, it's almost like, wow, just the reliability of the way he could just play a variety of different roles, whether it was on the wing, cross half forward, you could chuck him into the midfield and just his experience and his long kicking and just a smart player. Like you just you just forget, like forget how much of a of a good, solid contributor he was week in, week out. Like it's just like when you mentioned his name, then Pom, you go, Oh wow. Yeah, like he'd be yeah, Andy. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's tough. It's it's actually really tough. You know, yeah, like you don't want to use, you know, you don't want to use these injuries as an excuse. Mm. But you know, like when you when you mention those names and and what they could add to this team, the extra layer, it's like it's just like wow, yeah, we miss Sam Doherty so much. Mm. So yeah, good point. Well, yeah, mate, I mean, you'll be can, interested. You can, so you can cover Doc when you've got Chera, Saad, Fogarty, Cunningham, all those guys available. Mm. But when it's them and Doc out, it's yeah. It's a very right. hard. Go, Pom, Mate, what do you well, got? It's time to pick on me because I am an animal and I feel rather foolish after uh, Mr. Bucky uh, said you wouldn't bring more in. But, <laughs> uh, hey, the only my, my, my granddad used to tell me, son, during the war, the only difference between a hero and idiot is if he came home and kissed his wife. So um, I, I'm preparing to come home and kiss the wife. I've, <laughs> I've brought... Saad, McGovern, Pitonet and Arazio all admitted off to the VFL you go or into the injury room. In comes Lockie Cowan, Ashton Moore, Jackson Bins and Alex Chincotta, um, who's represented behind me. Uh, the thought process with this team, I looked at Jake Riccardi, who incidentally is their tallest forward. Um, and he had a blank this year against a young gentleman called Charlie Dean, who I looked at. And for, you know what, the role Charlie Dean plays in that back line that year, week was Kemp's role. And the idea was Charlie Dean got there first. Because if you watch Riccardi, he's kind of like a tall version of Darcy Fogarty. He hides in the golden square and he's the last kick. So I thought, Wietering, he, he's going to be the main man in that back line. Free him up, give Kemp that target that they like to do and bring the ball down to their intelligence moles and be a bit of aggressive. Cowan, he's got the big kick out there. I figured that Williams is going to be sad. Boyd probably now goes to the Williams position, which means someone is going to have to use their foot skills. And Cowan has about 20 metres on Boyd when he kicks it. 
Nick Newman, lockdown row. He's going to say hello to Toby Green, as he has done previous. Simple midfield, Cripps, Walsh, TDK, Akers, Holland. Half forward line, Elijah and Cottrell, for me, made some important leads. Ashton, right. So I got a bit of intel from Ashton that this week's focus was tackle pressure. It was something that he was weak at. And as he's number one fan in juniors, the guy's got the defence of France during World War One and Two. Six <laughs> tackles, five of them inside 50. I was really impressed with the hunger mm. and his presentation. The one thing I wasn't interested with was... He's a little bit ostentatious and tries the hard things. But looking at our forward line, none of them try the X Factor thing. So give him this game in a back line, I feel. The boys need a little bit of creativity in Spark. Jackson been straight in. He's worked incredibly hard. I like what they tried to do last week by putting Ollie Hollands and Elijah at half forward, trying to get him into the game. Jackson Bins is a natural to that. And Pom Cotter. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't break a friendship. He's straight back into my team. He's good to go. And Arazio Fantasia becomes my... I'm sorry, mm. that's meant to be Jack Carroll is my sub. Um, I like the fact that Carroll can play a thousand different positions. And I feel like he's a good sub if you don't have three injuries in game uh, like last week. So that is the team. Um, Arazio finally in VFL, so fire away, chat. And uh, Mr. Lepdog, you look primed to ask me a question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was going to ask about Arazio. So if he becomes Carol, that's it's it's essentially what I feel like we we kind of have 22 locked in players across our sides, and it's that 23rd spot where we're trying to work out is Fantasia like. Is Moya up for a debut? Is Chincotta available? Um, because I don't think any of us think Arazio. I think all of us who selected Arazio, and correct me if I'm wrong, is picked him because we basically thought there was no one else available. So that's yes. probably <laughs> speaking to dog, how he's dog going. Dogging my boy, I see. Dogging my boy, eh? You didn't have a Chincotta in, did you either? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know if he's alive or not. I haven't seen proof of life for a little while. Um but I How mean, I'm with. Shirt? <laughs> yeah, off, anyone off could have signed that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what uh, I'll ask, how I'll counter it is Jesse Motlock made his debut last year on, I mean, that made his debut on potentially his worst VFL game, right? And I remember doing the selection show with you because it was probably, he dropped his goal output, but he improved his tackles. He, he had like eight tackles that game, no goals. Just feel that he's done something he's never done. So mm -hmm. we don't have it. I think we can all admit that we rank so badly for shots at goal of quality because we're missing either Jack Silvani or Jack Martin, that ability to have someone to help them out. The only player on the list who can do that is Ashton Moore. So fire him to the wolves. We've got to mm -hmm. win. In my opinion, we've got to win this game because the pressure will build if we lose this too much so go aggressive yeah i think it's tough as well for a lot of the developing players we have at the moment because of all the injuries that vfl team loses so much quality in particularly in the front half it must be so hard to develop and, and play and learn when you, you you just don't have that experience and quality there for you being a small forward can't be the the most ideal spot in our vfl team at the moment yeah, my, my concern maybe with Ashton Moore coming into this game, he's going to probably cop a, a Connor Iden, who's just an absolute an absolute beast. He's like really a good. fourth year sort of just a man mountain, like plays on that sort of hybrid type defender and could be a tough initiation for the, you know, to, for a kid that probably hasn't set the world on fire so far. He's shown a few good signs. I, 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 like, your, I like your reasoning because I think, other than other than Harry and, and Charlie, it's I feel like I don't know. They all hit the scoreboard last week. They all kicked the goal. Lowy's, I think, um, did Durden kick one? Yeah, um, they did. And it was they how they, goal. yeah, it just but that, that, that lack of impact. Yeah. Um, and really, the way we play, like the way we play, and this tendency to 
to get that ball in deep and, and create contests, the fact that our smalls aren't having a bigger impact is mm. is quite it's quite surprising really that, you know, like it should suit it should the, the game the, the way we we bring the ball inside forward fifty is not necessarily great for Harry and, and Charlie, but they should be feasting. Our smalls should be feasting a lot more than what they are. So I actually like I like that idea and I think I think it's been a, a big hole in this team for for a very long time. Um, is that you know is that Bailey Fritch type player? Um, you know we're not going to get a Bailey Fritch, but that t- that type of player that's quick and can mark above their head and is dangerous and can. I call them they they, they make an impact in in five or six minutes. You know what I mean? They mightn't have touched the ball in the first half. Next thing you know, they've kicked two or three in a row. That type of player, you Will Haywards and. Um, and I know we're into him. Um, I don't know if you've heard any more about that, Pom, and what you think of Will Howard from Sydney. But um, it's interesting that his name has sort of popped up on our mm. radar over the last couple of weeks, given that he's a, a free agent. I, th- I think he suits what we want, isn't he? Because I think he's, he, he, he's a reliable Jack Martin, isn't he? I mean, Will Howard's injury list is zero, where... Yep. I mean, that's the issue. When we talk about the injury list, I know people are upset about it, but you made a great point, Bucky, yesterday on Twitter after your video last year. Like, nine out, nine of them have got injury lists forever. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's the Adam Saad one makes me laugh because Adam Saad has had three major hammies all the week after Ramadan, which if you actually look at world mm. sport, particularly my sport, soccer, the Muslim players genuinely get injuries around this time or are heavily rested because they're not replenishing the food during training and during games. It's a very common thing. So you look, major hamstring for Essendon last year to the day he did a hamstring and this way. So for me, you've, you've also got to look at players. So Will Haywood is the type of player I'd buy because the guy is the best ability is availability, mm. as me and Let Dog say. So. That's what I like about Haywood. He might not be the most brilliant footballer, but he's AFL level at worst and always fit, mm. which this is why we're in this predicament now. I've got five changes. I just feel like every every sort of every team that's in the window have got have got that type of player in their team. Um, you know, Jamie Elliott at Collingwood, obviously, and you mentioned Haywood. They're not necessarily going to sort of be consistently good across four quarters mm. but they are they're very very difficult matchups um and i don't i don't know we've missed sauce a little bit but i don't really see sauce as that player i just don't think he's probably classy enough um and has that sort of x factor uh martin obviously but he's just not he's just not durable enough we just don't see yeah. him enough he's not reliable he, he's the yeah he's the bonus he's the cherry on top if he's available yeah. you can't he, you can't build around him mm. no no so, Chip. yeah, I, I think the, the most disappointing thing so far this year with that forward line has been our, has been our smalls. Um, and they can't just be they can't just be pressure small forwards. I know that's a huge part of the game now and, you know, you want your, your smalls to create pressure, but we need, we need goals. We need, we need them to be dangerous, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's just not happening. It's the amount of Mate. the times it comes out the back of a contest and no, we don't have anyone there and it goes straight up the other end or it falls to the ground and our crummers are just in the wrong spot. We can, yeah. We've got smalls, but they don't play like smalls, you know? Mm. No, mate, I, I couldn't agree with you more, but we are at that time where we've got to do this. To answer your question, Chills, currently two, depending what happens with Murkoff, March Bank could be three, but at this stage... Two people will be joining our club in MSD. If we have three or four, though, Jesus, I I can't wait to be on Twitter. But, like, dog, (laughs) backline, what are we doing? You've got a few players. Who are you saving? Yeah, I could set everything up. Uh, You know what? I'm just going to go cop out and go Jordan Boyd because, geez, we love him. And his role is going to be super important with uh, Adam Saad going Mm. there. He's playing the halfback like a big boy. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Love it. Mr. Ian. Yeah, Lucky Cowan's coming straight in. Yes! Moo! Uh, Mr. Bucky. I'm going Lewis Young. Oh, Thank you, Bucky. Thank you, Bucky. 
Uh, put him at put him at full back. I agree with I agree with uh, Black Dog. All right. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Give me speed. <laughs> Ching Car. Well, he's uh, big. Uh, Ching Car. Pom, Pom's got an inside scoop here. That's what's really happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would never use contacts for inside scoops ever. Um, I know. I'm just Chat. trolling you, Pom. <laughs> Chat, you've got two selections. I need two defenders. We need a centre half back and a back poke it. So fire away. Um, Chills, I actually agree with you. Macman and Ned Cahill. I, I, Ned, you'd love Ned Cahill, wouldn't you, Buggy? He's a proper small forward, isn't he? He just snags goals for days. Oh, I mean, he's yeah, I mean he's he's pretty classy too. I like I like the look of him, but geez, you, you wouldn't want to bring another one in. We've got too many of them. <laughs> Well, you, you've got to get the right ones, haven't you? Do you know yeah, I mean? you've got to get the right ones. Hopefully you know I mean? they come good. You've got to get the right ones. You've got to get the right ones. But we are in a Newman have been saved by you, chat. I love it, Kemp, just missing out. Um, we have got midfield, so let dog, give me a midfielder. Um, I will simply pick the captain, Patrick Cripps. At Very least um, Ben Crocker's not on our VFL list anymore, so we don't have to have that conversation every single stream. <laughs> Did you see how lo- big Ben Crocker was this week as well? He's like, massive, he's, mate. Mate, he's he almost as big as Reece Ma- like... Matheson. He, he, mate, I can't believe he kicked goals. Um, Mr. Ian, who are you picking? Uh, give me Sam Walsh. What a comeback performance. First game back from injury. My goodness. Right, he's beautiful, isn't he? Uh, Mr. Bucky, who were we saving in the midfield? I think a guy that might be right up there at the moment in our best and fairest, Georgie Hewitt. Oh, Georgie boy. Can't even, though it. it's, even though it's only five games old, but <laughs> he's having a, a pretty consistent year and it's great to see considering all that issues he had with his own back. Mate, back's... Uh... A peculiar thing. I, I reckon Sydney may be regretting it because I think they thought it was worse than how mm. it's turned out. So ho- hopefully we can convince them here Wood's got a bad back uh, at the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> who, who am I saving? I, I'm going to save TDK. I've become a TDK fan by chat. I need t- we need wingers. I'm trusting you, chat. Wingers. So your options for wingers are Bins, Carroll, Cottrell, Elijah, Oliver, Oliver, Akers. chat, Akers. Oliver, Akers. <laughs> <laughs> He's from manipulating the draft. Uh, Ollie and Akers, well done, says. Well done. Uh, Cottrell and Carroll, Lucky Jack. I'm surprised you didn't pick Plowman and Carroll, to be fair. Bins and Hollands. <laughs> Hollands and Bins. Oh, tell you what. It was close. Oh, hot, our a- Akers and Hollands are in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well done, that, Chuck. I, that's the first time we've had so much variance on the uh, mm. on the the wing there. He's getting some love, old Binzy. I think we he does. Old, old Binz, old Binz. Well, he can be selected thing. here, chat as well. The half forward, I I will allow it. He does like the half forward. Um, we have got um half forward, Mister Leckdog. Who are we saving? Um, give me Elijah, please. Yeah, I wanted him. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. You can, you can still cheer for him, Bucky. That's all right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ian. I'll go a uh, big number four in our goal kicking at the moment, Matty Cottrell. Is that is that true? Well, yeah, he's currently, like yeah, he's kicked, he's kicked five goals. Uh, always has kicked seven and then Harry and Charlie above. He, he, he wouldn't lie. Um, Mr. Bucky. What are we after here? A, a forward. Uh, are we? Uh, nice. I am going to totally manipulate the system uh, because Voss names him here all the time. I'm putting Matt Kennedy. Uh, first time I've never saved Kerner that chat, so I am trusting <laughs> you. We need two key forwards. This should be straightforward. This should be straight away Mackay and Kerner. So, <laughs> chat, um, throw it in. Throw it in. Big pit in full forward. Why not? We, we, we got rid last year, remember, you for the, the wild card because uh, Lockie broke it. <laughs> so I need two forwards, chat. Fire away. Uh, Maura Mackay, H and Charlie. 
H and Charlie, Charlie, H and Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, 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 H and Charlie. Well, well done, chat. You're very. You, you could have been mm. creative. Okay, we're now on to. We've changed this. We don't name a sub. We're going to cop it out like Mr. Voss does. Subs. So, um, we just got the interchange bench. Leg dog. Bins. Carol. Durden. Fantasia. Mm. Ken Moore. Or Williams. We're actually in an interesting position here with uh, one name being named that I haven't expected. Uh, I, I'm going to go Kemp because I don't think we're dropping Kemp. Um, hmm. I love mm. it. Mr. Ian. Yeah, it's interesting. The team balance, trying to get that right. But I think just quality regardless, Zach Williams will need to come in. And maybe that allows us to tweak things around and move maybe, some guys yeah. off of some midfield minutes. If maybe he does the dock roll. Maybe he's a midfielder today. Maybe so Boyd's half forward. Who knows? <laughs> I, I love it. Um, Bucky, Bins, Carol Durden, Fantasia or Ashton? I think if Bins doesn't debut, I think there'll be anarchy. I think there'll be anarchy in the streets of Royal Parade. I think there'll be all sorts of... I think there'll be fires lit. And, uh, yeah, no, put, me, put the Bins out, as they say. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save Corey Durden. And for the first time ever, chat, I'm giving you the responsibility. Are you saving Carol, Fantasia, or Ashton Moore? Chat, this is on this is you. Um, so yeah. we've got... I don't Carol really mind Fantasia. which way this goes, just quite. Oh, I think it's, a, I think it's <laughs> yeah. probably the simplest one we've had so far. This, I we've think... got... Two votes for Carol, chat. Carol, uh, yeah. Carol. Pom, yeah. Pom's just hidden Pitto's name. Everyone wants to know where Pit. Oh, or did we all drop Pitto? Yeah, we, we all, all dropped, dropped him. him. <laughs> oh, well done, everyone. Carol's the man. We, we, we all dropped him. So the rules of the game, chat, honestly, you've got to blame Lockie Jack. He, he, yeah. We used to have the wild card. He manipulated it like eight weeks in a row to get it. But Carol gets the job there by based on yours, chat. Um, so there we are. Oh. So the yeah. team, Cowan, Young, Newman, Boyd, Weirin, Chincotta, Akers, Cripps, Hollands, Elijah, Mackay, Cottrell, oh, he's Colonel Kennedy, TDK, Walsh, Hewitt, Kemp, Williams, Bins, Durden, Carroll. Chat, go over to Blue Abroad to watch Mr. Ian, who somehow is on that show. But he's <laughs> Two here. places Ian, at once. <laughs> Ian, are you doing anything else this week that the chat needs to know about? Uh, that is it at the moment. So, yeah, once we're done with this, feel free to head over to Blue Abroad to check out our sort of GWS preview. And we obviously recap a bit of the, the Adelaide loss as well. A lot of fun. Um, and then, yeah, we're doing it again next week. We'll be on Pommy's channel, of course, for the selection table. Plenty of fun stuff. Mate, and uh, while you're here, Monday, are you going to come and do Pony Ponders with me at 9 o'clock? Lock it in. Lock it okay, in. Okay, there you are. World exclusive <laughs> chat. World exclusive. Let dog. What are you doing this week? You're always painting models. Tell me what hey. you're doing this week. Uh, dropped a new video a couple of days ago on my channel, which I think is YouTube.com/slash Let Dog, but I'm not it's sure. In the, it's in the comments. How's his neighbor blue corner chat? Uh, so check that out. Let me know if you think it's cool. Uh, other than that, I don't have a lot of content coming out this week. Pom dropped an article on Monday. There'll be another one going out on Code Sports uh, on this coming Monday. So keep an eye out for that. Well, top secret, I might need you for a video this week, uh, Lake Dog. Okay, uh, I'll be about, on Pom's channel for whatever the video is we're doing. Uh, uh, about deaths in the injury list. Um, and Mr. Bucky, Bucky, I'm guessing you've got a preview coming out soon, now or soon? Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow, mate, and then I'll get the, the usual comments from the usual people saying, cheer up, old man. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been the consistency this year. I've got a few trolls just sort of having a go at me about being so miserable, but that's all right. We're all different, Pom. We're all different. <laughs> Mate, now I've tried to be more happy, and I've got a lot. I've got a lot of people in my comment section asking me to go back to calling people cunts. So I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, yeah, I, they, I don't understand anymore. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want a happy me. I tell you, it's yeah. not. That's not who I am. I've got to be so, angry. But no, nah, yeah, looking yeah. forward to it, mate. I'll. I'll. Uh, I've got to run. I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. We'll see you next week. Chat. Look after yourselves. Um, preview yeah, is up. Pommy ponders with Ian on Monday. Um, me and Let Dog will get a video about injuries, but peace, love, and light. Go and check out Blue Abroad. Go and see, say hello to Navy Blue Corner. See you later, everyone. See you guys. See you, boys.